Today we are heading out to Ogden, North Carolina, and I'm going to eat my own words by installing a Goodman SSZ 140-42. It's a 14 sear heat pump. Uh, it's actually going to be 15 sear because we're going to add a TXV to the air handler. It's going to make it 15 sear. It's an ASPF air handler, which is an X13 motor. Uh, I prefer those over the variable speed just because of the cost of them, and I've seen a lot of the variable speeds have problems. So uh, we're just going with X13, my personal favorite. So we're going to run a new line set for it. It's going to be enclosed in slim duct or speedy channel or whichever one I got. Uh, we're going to redo the trunk duct because the trunk duct is uh, about 20, 25 years old. And uh, I'm sure it leaks around the collars, and we don't want to put a 15 sear into a trunk duct like that. So we're going to do that. And this is day one. This is basically going to be the line set and maybe a little, a little bit of odds and ends. That's probably it. Okay, this is the inside look at the hole I cut through the outside of the sheathing. I'm going to put speedy channel down the side of the building, and these are the two drains right here. The one that's insulated is the primary drain from the coil, the other one is the secondary drain from the pan. And uh, I haven't hung them up here, I just want to show you that I put those on the bottom so you make sure they have as much fall as possible, then I can put a line set on top. I'm going to run it back and uh, just leave it in the area, because we haven't set the new unit yet, still have the old carrier over there. So uh, we're going to run it back to about that point, maybe turn it up and leave it there until tomorrow. The next thing I'll be doing is taking the uh, bender here, bending this piece of copper out the hole, kind of running it along down there with the drain. I'm going to try to bend it up and curve it around a little bit. I'm not quite sure how far I'll go with it today since the new unit's not in yet. But I like to kind of match up where the drains are going, then curve it up and over to the air handler. But uh, as for this part, I know it's going to bend out. And then once I'm done in here, I'll be bending it down the wall and inside of the speedy channel. All right, this is our bend coming up to the air handler. We'll run across and down to the new air handler. So you have the old one in there now. We bent it down. We'll run a flux run, runs down, and goes out the side of the building. So I'll try to keep everything concise and high enough where you can go underneath it if you need to. Service the other side of the house for whatever reason. Okay. Like we said, we're going to replace the old trunk here. We're keeping the runs because the runs are still in decent shape once I rehang a few of them. And uh, the trunk's really just old and outdated. And we want to, since it's 15 sear, we want to make it 15 sear worth duck work. So. We got our line set run over to this point. 3 8 thermostat wire cold up here. 7H runs up here, it's going to run over and down into the top of the new unit. Uh, everything's run to this point, I can do the rest of it once I get the new unit in place. It's cool TXV, you can see they added a TXV whenever the system was changed out about 10 years ago. Because uh, the air handler's from 1992 and had a piston and they were trying to, I guess, make it more of a rated match with the uh, TXV. And it does help a little bit, but... Uh, there can be certain problems with the heating cycle, but it's kind of an unorthodox way to mount it. But I think you can mount it inside a cabinet if I remember correctly, if there's enough room. Sometimes there's not. But that's where we're looking. I'm going to try to set the air handler tomorrow. Maybe we'll kind of have a rough set into the old duct system so we can have it online tomorrow, then change the duct system out on Wednesday. So we don't have any uh, evenings where the homeowner doesn't have AC because they have kids. So we'll try that. It doesn't always work out there. But, uh, okay, well, that's all for today. I'm going to caulk those holes over there, and I'll be done. All right, we got our Goodman SSZ 14042 sitting on the pad here. There's our old carrier unit sitting down there. Haven't connected our lines yet or our electrical or anything. It's our old stuff we're going to rip out. There's our connection. We're going to add new control in there and new control in the attic to prevent freezing and prevent short cycling due to power loss and things like that. But I'll show you all that in a little while. But there it is. Okay, we got our air handler set. We tied into the old ductwork so they'll have AC for tonight. Tomorrow we'll come back and disconnect it and put in a new trunk line. Uh, and insulate this return duct here. We have two ducts, one in the back, one in the top here. We got our lines that are coming up, over, down, and into the air handler. Got a field mount TXV to make it 15 sear. Got the bulb mounted at the 
2 o'clock position as recommended from Emerson. Uh, right now I'm doing the low voltage wiring and I'll be adding a freeze thermostat and a line voltage controller. Uh, I'm going to start adding them on all my installations to sort of uh, prevent some of the freezing and stuff which is I think is like the worst problem with air handlers and freezing up over the years for whatever reason. So I'll show you how I do that and uh, we'll finish her up and get her started. Okay, it's hard to see, but I have actually mounted a freeze stat on a manifold exiting the evaporator coil. And I'm going to feed two wires, one from that freeze stat, one from the overflow switch. And they're going to pass back into the air handler control compartment to uh, the terminal strip. And I'm going to break Y there through both of those plus another pan switch. So if a pan switch trips, the overflow trips on the coil pan, or that freeze stat gets too cold, it will break connection, and our line voltage monitor outside will uh, start a process of delay on break, so the compressor doesn't re-energize real fast, especially with the freeze stat. And uh, it also monitor line voltage in case there's some sort of problem with that. Uh, if you lose a leg of power or something like that, or a partial leg of power, then uh, the unit won't continue to run. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wire those up here, and uh, we'll be closer to starting her up. And we got our Goodman sitting out here, all tied in. Our drains up there, I might run those down a little bit lower. Got our legs underneath it to keep it off the ground. I like those things, keep it clean underneath it. She's good to go, she should be coming on any minute, but uh, if I get more film of that tomorrow, we'll be the film of the control I put inside here. And uh, we'll be installing some new trunk duct and be all done tomorrow. Today we're taking off the old ductwork from the system we started up yesterday. Get our line set. And our secondary drain without the insulation on it and our primary drain running beside it that's insulated. I took off the little fitting off the supply side. You can see right here is the old S and drives. And uh, they're untaped and things like that. That's why we're doing this. Just to make it a little bit tighter. It's only about a 35 foot duct system, so it's not real long. So we're hoping to change this out today and uh, get a little AC from our new system while we're doing it. We have our old duct work out here, you see. Nope, duct work's gonna run right down the stairs. It's gonna be 18 inch round to start with and reduce as uh, we take run outs off of it. We have about eight foot of 18, eight foot of 16, eight, or 10 foot of 14, and then 10 foot of 12. And basically that's uh, used to keep the airflow uniform throughout the house. If it was 18 all the way down, the ones on the end would get no airflow, obviously, because the pressure inside the duct drops as uh, you push air out of it. All right, all our trunk duct is in. Run all the way back here to the air handler, ASPF, Goodman Air Handler. That's all our stuff. Returns are run, it actually runs underneath here because there's enough room now. I'm doing the run outs on, oh, excuse me, this side here. I've already done the ones on the back since they're not in the way, but I didn't want to do the ones on the front since uh, they'd be in the way of us carrying the trunk duct in here. And uh, also, we turned the AC on so a little bit of that cold air is coming through here. And right now, I'm just going to come down the side, tying in those runs. And uh, hopefully, we should have some better airflow in the house, a little bit less duct lost. And uh, we'll be pretty much good to go besides cleaning up. The duct work is all done. I've gone down and finished tying in all the run outs. Uh, see we mastic all the seams on top here, that's our return elbow, we had to insulate a little mastic on this which we pop off and we are good to go, so we're going to seal it back up, let's take a look at it running outside and then we will be done, thank god it's like 100,000 degrees up here. Alright, that's all for this one, we have our surprisingly quiet Goodman here, performing well, a little bit of sweat back down there our enclosure one more time we're all good to go I'll do a little bit more video on that uh, controller I was talking about I didn't really film too much on it it's uh, I think it's ICM 492 uh, voltage monitor single phase does a couple other neat things so uh, maybe I'll do a video on that alone it's kind of a cool little gadget so that's it for today high efficiency wonderfulness and I'll see you later